Rebecca Valance. I'm Alex Kokich. And I'm Paula Hahn. We're from Paul's Camp Community College of Oceanography class, and this is our video. Good morning. I'm coming to you live from the Chesapeake Bay, and I want to talk to you a little bit about the pollution of the bay and harmful algal blooms. Some of the things that contribute to these harmful algal blooms are nitrogen, carbon dioxide, sedimentary pollution, and phosphorus. These pollutants gather from different pollutants that we'll talk about today, and the algae, they feed off of it, and as they feed off of it, it gets bigger, and so it blocks the surface layer, and the fish, they try to eat, you know, these algal blooms and it gets stuck in their gills. Also, it blocks the surface layer so the light can't get to the bottom, which kills the plants at the bottom. And also, as they die and fall to the bottom and decompose, the bacteria that decompose them use oxygen, and so it takes out the oxygen from the bottom layer, which causes anything that can't move away, such as oysters, to die. And one of the main points that we want to focus on is sustaining the bay. And sustainability is the ability to be prosperous and healthy and remain that way for a, a long period of time. And some of the ways we're going to talk about are at the end of this video. And first we're going to talk about some of the pollutants and how they get there. The first area I want to talk about is agriculture. Agriculture attributes 40% of the nitrogen and 50% of the phosphorus from the runoff. And ways we can prevent that is from, um, you know, crop rotation and cover crops and also <clears throat> when the animals are feeding, putting them in different pastures so that they're not constantly grazing on one area. Another area is climate. As things heat up from global warming and the greenhouse gases, those algal blooms, they are able to feed more and also <clears throat> it reduces the amount of dissolved oxygen in the water because dissolved oxygen cannot be held in the water when it's warmer. And so ways that we can prevent that those um, gases is to do no-till farming, stream buffers, cover crops, and rotational grazing. And some of these ways are not ways that we personally can affect the bay, but we can write people, we can talk to our farmers that are local, and other ways we'll talk to you at the end of the video about how you personally can remain sustainable and help the bay at your home. Okay, I'm here to talk about sewage and pollution in regards to sustainability. Sewage and pollution both increase amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus, and carbon dioxide in large bodies of water. Um, this causes eutrophication, which is pretty much just um, excess nutrients in the bay. This is bad because it causes hypoxia and hypoxia and red algae, which hypoxia is um, the depletion of oxygen in water, and red algae is toxic to animals, and together these two create dead zones where no animals can live. Um, Sewage mostly comes from sewage treatment plants which leak, and pollution comes from many places including cars, just runoff from the streets, oil spills, and, uh, um, and there are many different ways to prevent sewage and pollution. Um, there are new types of sewage treatment plants that people are trying to build which would greatly decrease the amount of sewage running into the bay. And there are many ways that people can prevent pollution, just in small ways too. Just um, more fuel efficient cars, um, which burn a lot of fuel, which releases nitrogen, which goes into the bay and kills animals. There are many ways to prevent oil spills as well. Um, less underwater drilling, and just in general being more careful with transporting oil from different places. And um, finally, power plants let off a lot of chemicals into the air, which goes into the bay. And there are many new ways to get that same amount of energy in more green ways. Following up on more pollution, uh, we are talking about, I'm talking about uh, uh, phosphorus and 
nitrogen uh, running off through storm drains from uh, it collects when it rains the water collects on impervious surfaces such as roads parking lots and roofs uh, and this prevents the water from soaking into the ground so it runs off into streams or other bodies of water or directly into the um, water processing drains. Uh, uh, they have this uh, TMDL, total maximum daily load of pollution, and uh, this is measured over, I think it's 30 years they measure it, and uh, they have decided to the uh, EPA, uh, in Environmental Protection Association, has uh, put the TMDL on Chesapeake Bay, and they're monitoring the pollution, watching it, making sure it doesn't get uh, too out of hand, and the bay doesn't get uh, declared impaired, uh, which is when the water is far too polluted for life forms or really anybody to do anything with the water. Uh, scientists have come up with a blueprint sort of thing on how to, or they're hoping to come up with a blueprint sort of thing on how to fix the pollution problems in the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, and they say that if the community around the bay uh, cooperates and um, helps with their plans for uh, the Chesapeake Bay, it will be a fairly fast and easy job to uh, uh, fix the pollution problems in the bay. My portion of the sustainability of the Chesapeake Bay is covering some of the coastal sea life that we have and um, some of the problems that exist today are the overfishing of the menhaden. They are part of the coastal food web and the commercial fisheries since the um, uh, supplement, diet supplement of um, omega-3 has been uh, marketed, it has increased uh, considerably the amount of fishing that is done. Um, the um, Manhattan, for the most part, um, they really don't have a uh, way to replenish themselves without the help of the commercial fisheries and as of January 2012 it is believed that the um, uh, supporters of the coastal <laughs> waters the Menhaden are relying on the commercial fisheries to basically um, become a safeguard within themselves by limiting the number of the catch that they bring in on a daily basis. And with the um, limiting of the catch, uh, the, hopefully the Menhaden would have time to basically increase by the numbers. The other uh, ocean life that, or bay life that we're concerned about are the oysters. The oysters are becoming fewer and fewer. And though they also suffer from the red algae, uh, taking and depleting over top of them and basically uh, the sediment buries them. Uh, oysters are, build their own habitat and through building their own habitat uh, they also uh, re re reproduce their own, their own shells through that and create their own reef. Um, so we want to take and also um, continue our studies with the uh, artificial beds that are being generated in inland waterways where they are setting them above the sediment and they have found that that is working for them in some of the rivers upstream. Um, and then lastly I want to cover some of the seagrasses. The seagrasses um, are a habitat for a lot of wildlife uh, within the uh, Chesapeake Bay. Um, they're supportive to the small crabs, they're supportive to the snails, 
Um, and they also filter some of the uh, contaminants that uh, reach the bay. Um, but because they're becoming so few, um, it's getting more difficult to um, keep the, the grasses themselves uh, productive enough. Um, and so I'm going to point out to you some of the differences we have. Um, this is diseased water waters um, where the grasses are dying out. But down here we have where they have uh, put some purifications in place and the water grasses are now surviving. Um, also here we have where the menhaden are being caught with huge nets. We're not talking just small nets here, it's taking two boats to basically pull those two nets, those nets together in order to draw that fish. And uh, down here we have the, um, the uh, coastal food web in which the um, menhaden play an active role. And down here they have, I uh, have an example of where the um, uh, surveyors have pulled a uh, oysters from uh, a small but mostly dead and coated black with sulfuric smelling muck. Um, so these are some of the things that we're dealing with and some of the things that um, are important to the coastal food web and we'd like to see that um, we can get to a point in our generation that will improve it for future generations. Now I'd like to talk to you about some ways that you can personally influence the Chesapeake Bay in a positive way. Transportation. We go everywhere mainly in cars. Many people, cars have become affordable and many people can, you know, they drive to work, they can, um, you know, take the bus. So ways that we can remain sustainable in transportation is, one, you can at low speeds roll down your windows to keep cool. This uh, reduces the amount of gas that you're using at low speeds. Also take alternative transportation. In Norfolk there's the tide and everyone can use that rather than having a bunch of different cars on the road. Also carpool, that's a great way to prevent the amount of gas being used. And what you can do is take the most fuel efficient car out of the group and just use that form. Also, um, wash your car on the grass. This allows all of the soaps to be filtered through the ground before going into the system. Uh, here's another picture of washing your car on the grass. Also, this is a picture of what you don't want to do. It shows the, the soaps running off and going down into the gutter, which ultimately goes to the bay and contributes to the pollution. Another way, uh, ride your bike if you are going short distances. Also, keep your tires inflated, which um, it helps with the gas mileage and making sure you get the most gas mileage out of um, you know, a particular gallon. The reason why it's so important to remain sustainable in transportation is that one gallon of gas burns off 20 pounds of carbon dioxide. That is astronomical. One gallon, just one gallon. We need to make sure we're buying fuel efficient cars. We need to make sure that we're commuting as much as possible, taking alternate forms of transportation, biking, and also other ways are if you're going out to run an errand and you have a few things you need to do, it's more cost effective to, to make a longer trip because your car will still be warm and so it uses less gas to get from place to place rather than leaving from your house, coming back, let your engine cool off, and then going out again later. And those are just, you know, some basic ways that you can help the Bay specifically, personally. A few ways to stay sustainable at home is turn down your heat or air conditioning and hot water heating, save trees, fuel, and postage by paying your bills online, install low flow shower heads to reduce water usage, and clean or replace your air conditioning filter as recommended. It's important to do these things because power plants, power plants send off nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and phosphorus into the air, which then goes into the bay. And these things help, and the less electricity you use, 
the less chemicals that will go into the bay. Um, continuing with uh, sustaining sustainability, uh, <laughs> we're taking energy saving a step farther. And with that, um, it's recommended that um, when you're trying to do upgrades to your home, uh, that you find appliances that have the energy saving guide on it. And it'll list just how many dollars it expects to save in a year or is estimated to save in a year. And another way that you can uh, help with the um, use of uh, non-pollution type electricity would be to have the um, heat, have it, heat pumps or generators that um, use 20% less energy in order to produce the electricity needed. Um, again, with the thermostats, replacing your thermostat with a programmable thermostat. Um, this allows you to basically program your thermostat so that when you're not, when you're away from home, say for vacation or during the day while you're at work, you can set that temperature at the minimal to keep things from, say, at 50, 55 degrees, and that way you're reducing the amount of electricity that you're using in your home. Um, the other thing that we have uh, listed is the um, light day night light sensors. Um, so that you're not running lights all the time, uh, you can have an outdoor sensor or an indoor sensor where it will pick up on when it becomes night or when it changes to day and will turn the power on and off as needed, reducing the amount of power that you would need in your home. And the LED lights are the latest thing on the market today. They um, offer a 28-year uh, lifetime on their bulbs, though they're higher priced, they last a longer period of time. Of course that time could be reduced if um, you use it for longer periods of time than would be uh, the average for that lifetime of the bulb. The other thing you can do is to um, have your home converted to uh, total solar power and that requires solar planners and there's a lot of uh, commercial uh, solar companies out there that uh, are offering many discounts just to promote their product. And the last thing and probably the most that can make the difference is learning to turn the switch off. Okay, this is the uh, how the pollution tends to get into the water system. It'll rain down on power plants, just cities, really anywhere, and then the water will run off into streams and process its way into the larger bodies of water. Um, here's where the water, the drainage, uh, uh, goes. Uh, here's, this is where it comes out into the water. And this is just kind of a picture of, you know, the pollution in the bay. Uh, if you see in this picture, there is a lot of just bottles and wrapping wrappers and all kinds of just trash. This accumulates not necessarily through the drainage. The drain, it does, some of it does get caught up while the water is draining, but most of it is just from people not taking the time to properly dispose of their garbage, so they just toss it to the side and they'll land in the water or in the path of draining water. If you see in this picture, there is no pollution. There no, there's no trash. The water seems to be uh, fairly clear and flowing well. This is what we're searching for. This is what we're trying to get. This is what the bay needs to look like. And so the journey ends for today. Tomorrow brings a new day, a new day of hope. <laughs> On our walk to the beach, this was some of the remnants that we found right at the drain. Amazing. Sand, coffee cup, and styrofoam. I don't know where these things come from, but they certainly don't belong here. Here you go.
And you can see this stuff is Wait a liter you can you see go. literally that this stuff is within one foot. I had some coffee out here and I'm going to throw it in the trash can because that is the correct thing to do, not leave it sitting by the drain. This freshly washed in fertilizer bag. Far, far from the grass. a view of uh, what was going on and we see a fertilizer bag out here by the water which is contributing to the nitrogen and the phosphorus that are in the bay feeding these algal blooms. Okay, go. Coming out here to the beach today and seeing some of the pollution out here, at first this was just a project. It was something that we were researching but upon coming out here and seeing how serene and peaceful it is, it really makes me want to implement some of these things. What do you think, Nate? Yeah, it, just coming out here, it's beautiful. I mean, it's kind of, it's sad when you see the trash, like the bag and the uh, coffee cup that we saw earlier. It's just a sad thing. It really is. What do you think? Well, I think it is sad, and I'd like to do something about it so that it'll be able to be healthy. I mean, so that other people will be able to enjoy it. Yeah, and it needs it needs to be sustainable for future generations. I want my kids to be able to come out here. We were hoping to find pollution. We talked about it. We're like, maybe we should bring some trash down there. And then we're like, <laughs> Just toss around. Yeah. <laughs> This is a trash bag holder allowing you to actually volunteer to pick up trash on the beachfront. We're at a very restaurant right here where we filmed our video that they actually use fluorescent lighting. Oh. <laughs> Hi, with regards to sustainability, my topics are... Sorry. <laughs> with regards to sustainability, I'm here to talk about sewage and pollution. Eutrophic, eutrophication, eutrophication is, 
Should I just keep going? Can mm -hmm. you like, take all this out? Yeah, just keep going. Okay. 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 okay, eutrophication is the excess of nutrients. Good morning, my name is Rebecca Balance, and I'm coming to you live from the Chesapeake Bay. Me and some of my classmates are talking about the pollution of the bay and how we can prevent it. Is that good enough? Is a picture of the bay how it um, Here are a few ways to stay stay sus to stay sus Go. Okay. Here are a few ways to stay sustainable at home. Turn down your heat or air conditioning and hot water heater. Save trees, fuel, and postage by paying your bills online. Install low flow shower heads to reduce water usage and clean or replace your air conditioning filter as recommended. There are a few other there are a few other ways to stay sustainable at home. You can use um, fluorescent bulbs or LED lights instead of normal. Look at.